So in the last video, we looked at creating controllers. And the one before that, we created services. In this video, I want to look at combining the two. In other words, how do we communicate between the server and the client using services and controllers? So let's jump over to our documentation and take a look at services. So there's this client table that has been added to each service that we haven't looked at yet. And that is going to be the focus of today. All right, so we're going to scroll down and we're actually just going to click on client table right here. And you'll see that the client table is used to expose methods and events to the client. That's right. So anytime we want any sort of event or method that we want the client to be able to use within our service, we use the client table. And we can see an example right here. So we, we use uh, myService.client and then we write our function there, in this case, echo. And the first parameter of these client side functions is always going to be the player that invoked it. And then after that, it's all the arguments that the player has passed. And you'll see that in the attention box right here. Client events are pretty similar where before we just did register event to make a server side event. In this case, we do register client event in order to register event that the client can see and connect to. All right, so first of all, let's create one of these client methods, and then we're gonna look at how do we connect to it from this, the client. So in our past videos, we've created a couple of controllers, a couple of services as well. One thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go through and comment out any of these print statements, just to kind of clean things up. And then I'm gonna to go to my service, and I'm gonna create a new event, or a new function rather, my service dot client. And I'm gonna call it send message. And again, the first parameter is always gonna be the player. And then after that is any arguments the player has sent. So in this case, all we wanna do is output the message that the player has sent. So I do print player.name says, and then maybe in quotes, we can put the message. All right, and so what that's gonna do behind the scenes is this is actually gonna automatically create a remote function bound to this function. And so just to show that really quick, if I go to studio and I click run, I can actually go and look at some of the internal internal things that the error framework is doing. So under replicated storage arrow, and I can go to remote services, my service, and we can see a send message remote function generated. So that's automatically created and bound to the function that we created there. Awesome. So how do we connect to this on the client? In other words, how do we fire this on the client side? So again, back to your documentation, let's go to controllers. And let's go down to look at this. So we have controller.services. So we can actually access our services through that dot notation. And we'll see down here, we have other examples we have invoking a service, so I'm gonna click on that. And it's as simple as this. So we do self.services and then we access the service using dot notation, and then we just call the function. So let's try it. I'm gonna to go to uh, one of my controllers, my hello controller, and within start, I'm gonna do self.services dot my service, because that's the name of the service. And then I can call the function, which I called send message. And I'm gonna send it the message, hello from the client. Just like that. Now if we go to studio, I click play here. You'll see crazyman32 says hello from the client. And you see it's in green, which means it came from the server. The blue means it's from the client. Awesome. So it's that simple. I don't have to actually mess with those remote functions at all. It just happens in the background. It's pretty cool. All right. So some people might say, well, how do you do it in reverse? How do we make 
a function on the client that the server can call. And actually, to the surprise of some, this is an anti-pattern that is not included within the framework very specifically for the sake of uh, both the security of the server and also for the performance of the server. And the reason for that is you don't want to create a function on the client that the, f that the server is going to access in order to retrieve information. And the reason for that is that the client could manipulate that. Uh, you know, the server has no idea what it's getting into. It's calling this function. It has no idea how long it has to wait for it. And it has no idea what it's going to get back. You know, it might have some expectations of what it's going to get back or something, but uh, in essence, it's really unknown. And it's kind of a shame that Roblox even allows this pattern to exist within remote functions. Uh, but the framework does not allow this. And that's a very particular decision, design decision, and uh, should be followed. So there's actually no way to do that. It, it, in the case that you need to access items from the, the client and give that to the server, uh, the best way to do that is to create kind of an event pattern where the server will fire an event that the client will get, and then the client will send over that information either through an event or through uh, a client method like this. And we can show an example of that a little bit later. But for now, that uh, hopefully that's clear that there is no way for the server to invoke a client-side method. It's not allowed. All right. But the other thing that is definitely allowed is events. And events can go both ways, and that's totally fine. So let's look at how that works. Let's go back to our documentation. And we'll go first to services. And we're going to go to client events. We can see this, self register client event. And then there's a bunch of different ways to fire these events. Again, if we go up to our injected methods, we can see that we have fire client event, fire all client events, and fire all client events except. <laughs> And so what this does, fire client event will fire a client side event for a particular player. Fire all clients event will fire a, an event for all the players. And fire all client event except will fire the event for all players except that player. And you'll find that all three of these are really useful to have when you start kind of getting into the nitty gritty of creating events. So let's try this. So we've got uh, fire client event that we're going to, I'm sorry, register client event that we're going to use first. So within our my service, let's create client event. And let's say we want uh, an event that tells the client to do something. Client event fade. Yeah, just fade. And what we're going to do is when the server sends this command to fade, uh, the client will pick that up and invoke the fade controller appropriately. But anyway, let's register this one. So self register client event, client event fade. And let's just stop for a second and run the game just to see what it's doing. So if we run it, we can actually go to replicated storage arrow and under my services and that we see the fade remote event created. So just to show where that's created. Okay, so we know it's being created just fine. Now, in order to fire it, again, we do the fire client method, fire all clients method, or fire all clients event, events except. So in this case, we're just gonna make it simple. We're gonna use fire all clients event. So within our start method here, I'm just gonna get rid of that. And let's say we're gonna wait a few seconds because our client isn't in the game right away. So just to be careful, we'll wait three seconds and then we'll do self fire all clients events. We'll give it the, the event name and maybe we'll tell it to fade out. And then we'll wait three more seconds and we'll tell them to fade back in. All right, so how do we listen to this on the client? 
Well, through this, it's actually going to be a little different than before. We're going to use dot notation. So in our hello controller, we're going to do self.services.myService. And then through dot notation, we're going to access that event. So in this case, it was fade. And we'll connect to that. And then we have this kind of in out string that we're going to check. So if it's out, then we'll fade out. If it's in, we'll fade in. So if out is equal to out, then fade out, else fade in. And let's just check this first before we actually fade in and out to make sure that we're capturing the events. So again, this is client side and we're capturing that event from a server side service. So go into our game, click run or click play here. Let's see out. And then three seconds later, it should say in. Yep. Awesome. So you can see it actually didn't load yet until the very last second there. So I'm actually going to add some more time initially, eight seconds, just so we can actually see the feed in and out happen. Okay. So within our code here, uh, We'll do self.controllers.fade in. Or sorry, this one's out. And this one is in. So let's try that. Let's click play. And then we'll see that it'll fade out. Yep. And then three seconds later, it'll fade back in. Perfect. All right, so that's how we create events that are fired from uh, the server, but you can also make events that are fired from the client. So let's try that. So let's maybe say we have a client event uh, and very similar to our send message, maybe we wanna send another message. <laughs> kind of a pointless name. But let's I register another client event with that. And then within our start, we're actually going to connect to it. So we can do self connect client events, give it the name and the function. And then the player is always going to be the first parameter and then maybe the message. And we're going to copy this message right here. I want to say says another message and then we'll print out the message that the player sent it. So that's how we connect to a client side event. So now back on hello controller, I'm gonna copy this first, send another message, go to hello controller. And then in order to fire that event, what we're gonna do is self.services.myService dot that event. And we're gonna run fire. And then we can pass it a message. Firing this event from the client. And just to make it fun, we could even stick it into here so it will run at the same time that it's told to fade out. So run that code. Wait a few seconds out, and there it is. Crazy Man 3 says another message, firing this event from the client. So it worked, awesome. All right, so that pretty much covers uh, client to server, server to client communication. Again, this is a very powerful part of the framework that makes uh, development a lot easier, smoother than not using this such a framework. Uh, having to manage the remote events and functions can be quite a pain, uh, but using this sort of model, we never have to actually touch those. In the next video, we're going to look at modules and how they kind of fit into the life cycle. And then we'll also hit on the execution model in general to kind of give another overview of what that looks like.